Here is heaven. Now, uh, now you need to understand how easy it is to receive from heaven. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. All you have to do is ask for, go to the rock, Christ Jesus. Paul said he's the rock that followed them in the wilderness and ask him for the water. Ask him for the water right now. Whatever is going on in your life. Hey, listen, I got you instant cure of sorrow, sadness, pain, depression. I got an instant cure. I'm not here, I'm not here talking about something that I'm not experiencing at this very moment. It's not a reality in my life. In the life of everybody I know that has ever been born of the Spirit and baptized in the Holy Ghost. So all we want you to do is we want tonight, we want you to let your concept of God and salvation experience conform to the expressions that Christ Jesus described in His Word. So I want you to lift your hands towards heaven. Now, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that in your grace and your mercy you'll baptize these people of the Holy Ghost in fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight that every soul in this place will renounce religion. Those that have been spoiled by the philosophies of men, Christian philosophy, Father, tonight they would recant uh, their heresy that has had a form of godliness but denied the power thereof. Begin to experience how wonderful it is to be in your presence, Lord. <laughs> 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 <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> how wonderful it is to be filled up with your goodness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you with all my heart and soul. Father, I know that you're only looking for one kind of praise and one kind of worship, and that's that praise and worship that flows out by the Holy Spirit, which you've given unto those who have obeyed you, who have believed you, who have received that which you freely given. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you. I will praise the Lamb for sinners slay. Hallelujah. Oh, I will give you glory with all of your people for your blood has washed away my sins I don't think anybody should look sad about that don't look sad Don't be sad. That's not sad. Don't be sad. That's not sad. That's happy. That's happy. That's not sad. (laughs) Satan would try to put sin on you and claim you. He would try to convince you that because of your failings and because of your faults, which unfortunately for many are many, that he claims you and that he can separate you from the presence of the Lord. And it's only true if you're not willing to run to Jesus. Our Lord is so full of love and kindness and tender mercy goes beyond the comprehension of a human ability to understand. As soon as you come and run to him, it doesn't matter how many times you've blown it over and over and over and over again. He washes you up, cleanses you, he takes you. He takes you when nobody, he takes you when your mama don't even want you. It does not matter. It 
got no reason to be sad. I don't understand sad. I don't understand sad. Tonight I pray God in Jesus' name. That you will be those who are redeemed that the Lord in return come with singing unto Zion. And that everlasting joy will be upon your head. Hallelujah. Well, I, you know, I, you know, I quit, I quit playing the guitar and I quit playing the keyboards and I quit playing the other instruments because we started raising up people to do so. And my son, who has always been so faithful, moved to the University of California, Santa Cruz, to finish up his doctorate's degree. And ever since, has been hard to find faithful musicians. And, um, you know, but, you know, Father knows who puts the kingdom first and who doesn't and what your issues are. And he still loves you. It's just that you're not going to get to go very far until all of a sudden you begin to give those things which are most dear to you over to the one who would take your life and make it far better than all those things that are dear to you so that you won't even want to go back to what's dear to you right now because you just press it in for more of that divine goodness and glory. I mean, I praise the Lord for what Ruthiana's doing. She's just stepping up, and she might only know two chords, but I'm telling you right now, she's, she's hitting it hard with those two chords. She's knocking it out with those two chords. It's wonderful, it's wonderful songs that the Lord is giving her, and and I know for some of you, it may be a little bit hard to follow along. I don't, it, it's never, I don't understand that. But, you know, reality of it is, I, I don't understand most people's relationship with the Lord. For me, I can just, I can just lift up my voice and shout and sing if I don't know the words because I make a harmony with it, you know. And uh, reality, uh, you know, God says, be filled with the Spirit and speak to yourself in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And I really believe that both of those two things happen um, Together, it's just if you feel with the spirit, then you're going to sing. You're going to sing and make melody in your heart, amen. With with songs and hymns and spiritual songs, amen. and when you're singing and making melody in your heart with songs and hymns, and spiritual songs, you're going to get filled more with the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, you know the beautiful thing is, I just, I just, you know, know that the Lord Jesus has such a great outpouring of His presence for you. If you want to go around and advertise revival, you need to advertise to yourself. You need to market revival to yourself on a, on a daily basis, describing how good it is and how wonderful, what a great blessing it would be to you if you would enter into that realm. Amen. Amen. You need to go market what the great movings of God would do for your life should you just open up the door of your heart and allow the floodgates of heaven to fill your soul. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let it be kind of shang long care and nande. Let us son do ye brave hand is the kaya. Hallelujah. Lift your hand towards heaven. Malatana ekiri tai. Oh, jibli mando. Malareve kind of shambalakatea proper hold. Nende de mande is shiparo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Just go ahead, worship him. Come praise him. Come praise him. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Praise him. Alalamam. Talk to him. Just thank him. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his marvelous acts. Thank him for his wonderful love. Come on, open your mouth. It will work. Open. Say, ah, something will come out. I'm sure of it. Hallelujah. Lift that Sharamon Gaitai, Libby Shato Yilamandala. Hallelujah. So Rabaki Shalom Belekea Hateo de Ho. Mandele mange shero mon mandele veto sere mambele pitibre mambelo madeya sebre be pumundi sebre be pumundi sebre bando kimenela hala hala Hallelujah mamane remaine Hallelujah I will worship you Lord I will praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you know what the Lord has done is he's adorned his church with beautiful, glorious, wonderful, supernatural things. He's put this majesty in the splendor of his anointing in the midst of his church and upon everybody who would receive. So that these wonderful things uh, called the high praises of God would come flowing up out of our innermost being. So these wonderful things concerning the supernatural expressions of His grace and of His love would be in operation like the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, the working of miracles. You can be seated. Let me tell you something. I look at some of you and I see you doing this. I can see this in the realm of the Spirit. You are holding on to yourself so tight you are clutching yourself. You're so insecure. You're just clutching yourself. The Lord wants you to let go of that. He's got a far better life for you, for you than you holding on to yourself and clutching yourself. You don't want to be clutching yourself at the moment you lit, breathe out your last breath. The best thing for you to do right now is learn how to clutch Jesus, how to lay hold on him. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every stronghold of Satan, every influence of darkness, I bind you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that in your love and your mercy, your people will get insight and wisdom to recognize it's so much wonder, so much better to walk around with the Holy Spirit than to walk around with demon spirits. So it's far better to commune with you, Lord, and with the angels that go about doing your bidding that it is to come under the influence of angels of darkness. Father, you know, you see right now, Father God, the great need that exists within the United States of America for people to get out of the realms of religion and get into the realms of relationship with you that produces this wonderful outworking of your manifest presence. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to give the ability and to give the grace to every receptive person that is in this place. The means by which they would be able to receive this joy unspeakable. They would be able to receive this peace that passes understanding. They would be able to receive this love that goes beyond knowledge, this, out, this outworking, this flowing forth of divine grace that has an inexhaustible expression of your own beauty and splendor. Oh, Mama de Cara. Even, even as though it were like rivers, like rivers, like rivers of living water. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I dare say that the majority of you have not spent very much time today praising the Lord. I dare say that if we were to evaluate your life today, that very few of you have lifted up your voice in song and singing according to the word of the Lord. Don't be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the spirits, speaking yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So we're giving you an opportunity to make up for that disobedience right now. We're giving you an opportunity to gain some ground. We're giving you an opportunity to open up your heart and receive all those things that Father has already poured out. You know, on the ranch, we go and we open up the floodgates. And when we do, you better watch out because I'm telling you, everything's getting ready to get soaked. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out of there. It's going to come out of there, right out of the river. It's going to just bust through. And the Lord has already opened up floodgates. We don't have to sit here and, oh, God, open up floodgates. You want to stand here? Oh, God, open up floodgates. He's looking at you. He's going, open up floodgates. You got the bow, man. You're the one who's stopping the program. You've got to learn how to lift every voice. You need to understand your people. God, Father, has so much for us. He, he loves us so dearly. But we've been too influenced by the world around us. You don't recognize it. You know, I, want you to, I want you to understand something. You do not recognize it. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, that you had to be strengthened. Strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might so you can stand against the wiles of Satan. If you were not strong, if you've not been strengthened, you don't stand in a place strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, you're taken out continually by the tricks of Satan. Now you decide tonight. I want you to decide tonight. It's time that we no longer have the chain gang come dragging in. It's time for the saints to come marching in. Are you, are you with me? And that, that's not only for here. That's not only here in this place. That's throughout the United States of America and the Western world. There is a great need for a moving of the Spirit of the living God. I'm believing God that people will get saved and stay saved. That they'll receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost and let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon them. But what happens is this. You choose things throughout the day. You choose things throughout the day that actually grieves the Holy Spirit. That quenches the Spirit the moving of God's presence in your life. And now you're left barren and destitute, hurting and wanting, in need, offended. You're left in a place of not having this joy unspeakable, not having this realms of divine glory. And you alone decide whether or not that is going to continue in your life or whether it's going to come to an end. The more you sow into it, the more you're certain to have it to continue in your life. Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Tonight, you want to break that cycle off your life. God's done it. You have to decide. You have to make choices. Father is going to plead with you. He's going to cry out to you about making choices. To say, okay, God, I'm going to walk with you. I'm not going to choose the wrong way. I'm going to choose the right way. On um, this Saturday, or rather, forgive me, this Friday night, 7 o'clock, we're going to be doing School of the Spirit again. And in the School of the Spirit this week, the most important thing I know to teach people to start off with in terms of what it means to walk with the Holy Ghost is to be able to discern between what is the voice of God and what is the voice of man and demon spirits. And God has not made it subjective. It's very clear. He's very, he's very clearly described to us what it is He's doing. Wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with Him. And if you'll just take heed into the word of God and recognize, wait a minute, Father's never doing sorrow. He's never doing anger. He's never doing all these cares of this life. He's not doing many of these things that people continually choose to do. He's always doing love. He's always doing goodness. He's always doing mercy. He's al There's always praise there in his presence. The angels will not stop. If you want to see what it looks like to be in his presence, look at the angels crying, holy, 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 continually. They are overwhelmed with his glory, his goodness. They're overwhelmed with his joy at his right hand, his pleasures forevermore. In his presence is fullness of joy. Listen, we, we God wants you to understand this. This is what heaven is. Father has heaven for you right now. Why is it that there has to be a continual postponement? That's not rhetorical. I'm asking you. Now, dear people, I could, not, I could also imagine tonight that you're saying, wait a minute, there is no postponement. 
Maybe because the reality of how much more God has for you has never become, never become mindful of it. Well, we want you to become mindful of it. We want you to begin to step out and, and believe God for the things that He's described in His Word. This immeasurable divine glory that He's given, this wonderful realm of heaven so that you can literally be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. So I want you to open up your Bibles tonight with me to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. And I want, to, I want you to look with me at how wonderful it is. You know, this needs to become part of your life, your prayer life. And, and I, I, I petition you, come follow me as I follow Jesus. You know, I, I get to talking to the Lord, and as soon as I begin to talk with him or speak on his behalf, he gives, him, he gives me a mantle of his presence. He gives me a manifest glory of his presence. I believe it's a distinguishing mark between those who are religious and those who have a relationship with them. Those who are religious, the prayer just, you know, it just... You know, speaking into the air. Those who have a relationship, there's a manifest presence of God when they begin to talk about the Lord Jesus or when they begin to pray. These are the things that God has for you. He wants you to have this wonderful e encounter with Him, fellowship with Him, where you're overwhelmed by Him. It's like a mantle where you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And there you can now make no uh, provision for uh, the, the, the lust of the flesh to fulfill it anyway. You're endued with the power of the living God. I'm telling you, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire is a definite experience. And we pray that you have that. And one of the great things, well, many of the great things that come out of that are all of these wonderful things pertaining to the life of God. See, Jesus is the light of God's life. He's the light of life. His life and His expression of all that good things pertaining to life and godliness, love, joy, joy, peace, mercy, goodness, long-suffering. That is a light unto a lost and dying world. And the Lord has commissioned you and I to be that same light. Impossible without that same Holy Ghost. I want you to grab a hold of something tonight. Jesus Christ is talking to the overcomer. He says seven times in, a, in his address to the churches in Revelation chapter 2 through 3, those that overcome, I will grant to sit down with me in my throne even as I sat down with my Father in his throne. He said, those who overcome, I will make them a pillar in my father's house and they'll never go out anymore. Those that overcome, I will write, I will give them a new name. I will write their name uh, in, in, a, in a place where, where it's unforgivable, unforgettable and unmistakable. Uh, those who overcome should be dressed in white raiment, which is the righteousness of the saints because they're worthy. Jesus is writing to the overcomer, the most important thing for your life is being overcomer. Listen to me, to be an overcomer. Listen to me, not word of knowledge, overcomer, not miracle worker, overcomer, not signs and wonders person, overcomer. You're listening to me. And when you, because being an overcomer means that you're walking in the light as he's in the light. And, you know, Satan's going to continue to do his witchcraft. He's going to continue to do his deceptions and his seductions. And things are going to get worse continually as we see the day of the Lord approaching because that's what, that's the warning in scripture. And reality of it is, is many people are going to be deceived. The Lord said if it wasn't the fact that the days would be short and even the very elect would be deceived. And, and so you're going to have to recognize that the only possible way that you're going to stand against this a deception of Satan, this power of darkness that works in this world right now, spirit of Antichrist, is to be strong, strength of the Lord, and power of his might. You're going to have to understand how to be strengthened. God's not talking about your discipline. He's not talking about your human ability. He's talking about his life, his life-giving presence to be filled up, filled to the full, filled to the full and overflowing, filled to the full and overflowing, so much so that there's rivers. Amen. And so it's good to talk to the Lord concerning the things that he's done. I like to say, oh, God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you've given to me the spirit of wisdom. I thank you, Lord, that you've given me the spirit of understanding. I thank you, O oh God, that you've given me the spirit of counsel and of strength, valor, might, God, power. Amen. Amen. I thank you, O oh God, that you've given unto me the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
I thank you, Lord. I'll stop there. I thank you, Father, that you give him to me the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. I thank you, O God, that you've given to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that my eyes are now open so I can see the things that you made for me and the purpose for me to have in this inheritance that you now find in me, that you brought to pass when you raised Jesus from the dead. We're not going to stop there. Father, I thank you for your love and your joy and your peace and your long-suffering. Thank you for your gentleness, your kindness, your meekness, your goodness, your faith, your temperance. I thank you, God, for godliness. Just go down the list. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the one who's merciful gracious, long-suffering, full of goodness and truth. And that same life, you filled me with it. I pray in Jesus' name you get connected with these things. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, where do I get this drink? I'm telling you, it comes right from the Holy Ghost. It comes right from the throne room of God. Father, give it to anybody who yields. It's not going to force it on you. If you're minding the things of this life, if you're minding the things of this world, if you're carried about by your own interest, you're going, to, you're going to, by your own choices, cut yourself off from divine provision. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I know what Jesus is doing. I know what God is doing. He is strengthening us out of the realms of His glorious riches with all strength in our inner being. Yeah, he is. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, what many people do not realize is that Luke chapter 3, verse 16 is just as important as John chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, most people know John 3, 16, and at least they know how to quote it. They don't know it. The revelation of it hasn't come to them. The revelation of it belongs to the Father. He holds all rights to revelation. When He sees you are serious, He will open up your eyes so that you can understand the Scripture. Until then, it's just it's a knowledge, it's ideas, it's concepts. People, people have ideas and knowledge and concept that Jesus 2,000 years ago was born of a virgin, incarnated word. But it's just a concept, it's not a revelation. When it becomes a revelation, you touch it, you handle it, you feel it, you experience the, 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 the fruit of that partaking of his flesh and drinking his blood, of living in him. It's a reality to you. It, it is so much a reality to you. It is, it is more of a reality than if you were, had been there an eyewitness and seen the baby in the manger. If you had been an eyewitness and heard Gabriel say, you should call his name Jesus, for he shall take your sins away. Or he should save you from your sins or take your sins away. Pretty radical, isn't it? That's what Jesus means. Everybody got all the ideas about what they think Jesus means. We know what Jesus means. Gabriel told us what it meant. You should call his name Jesus, for he should save you from your, your sins. He's Jehovah's salvation. Hebrew language, Yehoshua. Most people know it in Aramaic, Yeshua. But Yehoshua or Yehoah, salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that many people try to translate the tetragrammaton, the yod heh wav -Hey, or yod heh wav -Hey, They try to translate that Yahweh, some people, Jehovah. But none of those vowels, J, V, were in any in the ancient uh, 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 dialect. And those sounds didn't really exist. It was wa and wo. So Yehovah is what we call Yehovah. That's, that's who you read in your Bible every time you read the Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of Yehovah. Hallelujah. And Yehovah spent, sent his, Yehovah spent, sent his Yeshua, his salvation. So Yehoshua or Yehovah's salvation. And Yehovah's salvation literally means you should call his name Yehoshua for he should save you from your sin. That's his love. How easy is it to get his love? Call on him out of his honest and sincere heart. Father knows how much you're interested in this world and how much you've done with it. He can see that. There are a lot of people come call on the name of Jesus. They think that there's some kind of magical incantation that will result in some unique situation for them and give them some kind of, of special protection against spirits of darkness. They, they just, they overly superstitious. 
There's no heart in it. Papa knows. We, we with the heart, we believe unto righteousness. With our mouth, confession is made salvation. Because we don't want the things of this world anymore. We're crying out for him. We want you, Father. We want your way. We want the things that belong to you. It's not about your ideas and concepts. It's not about your philosophy. It's a revelation. I've had Jesus. Jesus was revealed to me. He wasn't revealed to me like he was revealed to Saul on the road to Damascus. I would love that. I would love that. But he's been ever bit as real, really revealed to me. I know him. He walks around with me. He walks in me. I can feel it when he actually comes to me. I feel his presence. I know him by his joy. I know him by his peace. I know him by his purity. I know him by his awesome holiness. I, I know him by the expressions of of the atmosphere, the fear of the Lord. The very next verse, there, verse 3, it says, and he shall give him a quick understanding. That's totally bogus. It doesn't say that at all in the Hebrew language. He is the odor of the fear of the Lord. He's the odor of it. He's the smell of it. In other words, it's Holy Ghost conviction wherever he gets. He's the, uh, wherever you get, he comes. And you get around him. He's the odor. He's the odor of the fear of the Lord. I have a great, Confidence in Father's love for me. I, I'm so confident in Father's love for me. I'm courageous with His love. I, he's made me bold with His love. I believe all of these things are fruits of the Spirit. I believe boldness, confidence, assurance. There's not just nine fruits of the Spirit. There's this nine named in Galatians chapter 5. I count about 26 fruits of the Spirit. And I'm sure there's more. Because the fruits of the Spirit would be an expression of every dynamic dimension of, the, of, of God's own personal conduct and manner and way of living. There's more than 26. Are you with me? I mean, I, I think people just have a hard time keeping track of all we're supposed to love. Because we're pretty, you know why? We're pretty mental. God wants to change us! He would think, oh, well, if you love me, you'll accept me the way I am. No way. It's not love. God's not going to accept you the way you are. He calls you as you are to change you to be like him. That's it. That's the gospel. He calls you as you are to change you to be like him. He's not going to accept you like you are. He loves the whole world, but he doesn't have a relationship with them. There's a love for the world, and then there's a relationship love. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me, and then my Father will love you. Amen. That's what he said. John 14, 20. And my Father will love you. and We will come and make our dwelling with you. That's relationship love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God so loved the world. Amen. And he gave his only begotten son. See, that's, that's the beloved. It is hard to even express the terminology that is being used there of how dear the word incarnated in the flesh, Christ Jesus, is to the Father. He's my only begotten Son. You know, he gave an expression of it to some degree in a man that he found willing to be his partner. It was, hey, Father's been hard-pressed to find anybody to really go with him. I mean, there's a bunch of people always saying they're going with him. But come on. I mean, when Satan pressed the thing, because he wants, Satan really believes that all men want to serve him, and he tries to throw that in Father's face as though somehow he can use it as leverage. God says, I got one. I mean, Father deserves everything over one. I mean, Abraham, you know, he bargained with Father for ten Righteous. Father preserves everything for one. I got one if you consider my perfect servant Job. Somebody said no one's perfect. Job was. <laughs> He's righteous in all his ways. Somebody said there's none righteous. No, not one. Job was. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Jesus was. There's one for you right there. There's two. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you know, come on. How many, how many hundreds of millions of people were there in the days of Noah? Where man had so corrupted himself that his imagination had become only wicked continually. Listen to me, listen to me. You, you got more contamination of stuff going on from the realms of this world than what you realize. Why? Because you're anesthetized by it. You go out and you get alone with God for a while. You cut off all the stuff that you drink on a daily basis. And you'll come back after being alone for, with the Lord for a while. And you'd be vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked. You would. And here, Father, in His mercy, who only knows purity and holiness, has sent to us His Spirit of holiness, 
But there's no way. He, he will never mix with sin. I'm going to tell you, whether you realize it or not, there is no sin in heaven. So if you like sin, you're not going to like heaven. Dear people, the fear of the Lord, the odor of His presence, the odor of His goodness that causes us, everyone who has it, everyone who has the fear of the Lord, departs from evil. I believe that everybody hates evil. I mean, there's some loony tunes out there that are whacked out of their mind, so demon-possessed that they think they like evil, but they don't. Everyone hates evil, really. Everyone dislikes evil. The problem is, is they've never connected sin with evil. Because in a deception, Satan is able to make sin look so desirable. But if, with the honest evaluation and investigation, all the consequences of sin are evil. They're destructive. They work death and corruption. They work heartache and despair and torture and right. torment. Right. So you just need a little bit of wisdom. But praise God for what Babu Kuriman did is here. The wisdom and the spirit of wisdom is here. See, the ministry of the Lord Jesus described there by the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, 3. And the beautiful thing of it is, God gave him the Spirit without measure, and then he poured out in turn, poured out the Holy Ghost upon us. Like I said, Luke chapter 3, verse 16, just as important as John 3, 16. And you need to memorize it, Luke 3, 16, just like you memorize John 3, 16. Everybody memorize Luke 3, 16. Raise your hand. One person, two people, three, four, five, six, seven. So raise your hand. I'd like to call on you. Have you quoted? How many of you memorized John 3 16? Praise God. You know, one of the ways that we're strengthened is by the Word of God. That's why, that's why John says, I write unto you, young men, because you're strong. <laughs> the Word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. You've conquered him. This is the conquering power that overcomes the world, even our faith. You see, this, that comes forth from the Word of God, that which comes forth from walking in this realm. But John 3, John, John, Luke chapter 3, verse 16, John says, listen, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me who's preferred before me. He's going to baptize because he was before me, whose sandals I'm not worthy to even untie. He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Luke chapter 24 and verse 48 and 49, he said, go tarry in Jerusalem till you, endued, till you receive the promise of the Father and endued with power. Power. That power, dunamis, Greek language, many people run around and say dunamis. That's how you say it if you're from the south. I think everybody learned their Greek from somebody from Alabama. <laughs> dunamis, dunamis. And, and so dunamis, dunamis is the same is the same, really, as saying the spirit, of, the spirit of strength or the spirit of might. He gave the spirit of counsel, and I know King James said might, but it's spirit of counsel and strength. Or the, you could translate, if the Hebrew word is gibor, and it's guburu, giburu is actually the royal might or royal power. And it is most accurately, Gibor, Giburu, is more accurately translated power. He gave us power. This is what the Holy Ghost came and did. You come, came and poured out upon Christ Jesus, uh, the Messiah, our Lord, our Savior. He gave, him, he gave him this divine strengthening ability, which has also been made available to you and I by the Holy Spirit, by the same Holy Ghost. You and I have been filled with the same unlimited, unmeasurable realms of divine glory. He received the Holy Spirit without measure, and he gave in turn to us the Holy Ghost without measure. And somebody said, how are you, can you be sure? Yeah. John 7, 38 through 39, he said, if anybody's thirsty, come drink. I'll give you this water of life, and it'll, be, it'll pour out of you. It'll be of you, in, on the inside of you like rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. But after that he was glorified, he poured forth, according to Peter, that which you both see and hear. Being exalted to the right hand of the Father. I jumped from John 7, 39 to Acts 2, 33. You saw that, though. You saw that coming, didn't you? Why? Because you give yourself to the word. You know, lest you should be spoiled by the philosophies of men. You think there's philosophies being taught in church? Absolutely. Christian philosophy's been around since just about the time Jesus, well, since before Jesus started ministry, but Christian philosophy concerning the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ ministered 
started getting kicked in before he ever was crucified. And my goodness, after he was crucified, it just, it went rampant. And what do you think it's like today? It's just, all I'm saying, you don't have to believe me, but you do have to believe the word. You don't have to listen to what I've got to say, but I'm going to present the word, I'm going to present the word of the gospel to you, okay? I'm recording this. It's wide open for any review. Take it to your favorite theologian. Have him sit down and listen to it. He's going to tell you what he's saying is absolutely biblical, but he's probably going to say, I disagree with it. <laughs> Why? Because in, in, in scholarly circles and theological circles, experience has been elevated above the word. So the only theological thing that you can say is, yes, that's what the Bible says, but it's not our experience. And so, therefore, we've got various different theories and postulates about why it's not our experience. I'll tell you why it's not your experience. Because you're hard-hearted and unwilling to repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Amen. So I, that was for somebody else, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I would tell you there is absolutely nothing so wonderful as this life in Christ Jesus there's absolutely nothing so wonderful as this heavenly life this life of the Holy Ghost it's not some religious thing huh it's not a yabba dabba do shake around and run around shake and run around the church it's a life it's a life filled of the goodness and the glory of God that sometimes makes you shake and run around the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, I don't, and I don't get those yabba dabba doos out of it, but I'm going to tell you, definitely comes flowing out with this wonderful realm of divine grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. So, what am I going to do tonight? Am I, am I just going to declare to you, if I stand here and prophesy to you all night, declare these things to you, and you, you'll feel the peace, you'll feel the anointing while I'm ministering, and then you're just going to go back and do whatever it is you've been doing anyways? That's what's going to happen. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. Unless you're sitting in the meeting and you determine, I'm changing this, I'm changing that, I'm changing this other thing, I'm not having this routine anymore. Because that routine has kept me from being... The, the person that God's calling me to be. Those ideas, those concepts, that manner of living has kept me from walking in the spirit, has kept me from participating with those things that are freely given to me. You can't tell me that Jesus hadn't baptized us in the Holy Ghost or at least made an opportunity for you to be baptized. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Holy Spirit is with me, is in me. Now, if you don't understand the Holy Ghost, then you are in a very perilous situation because the Lord Jesus said, that the world would not be able to know him or receive him. The world. So if you cannot recognize the Holy Ghost, I'll tell you right now, if you don't hear my voice right now, if you're fighting against the things that I'm saying right now, it's proof positive that you're not right with God and that you're not one of his sheep because the sheep hear his voice. And he's speaking through me right now. And all I'm doing is declaring his word. I'm calling you to a place of coming to know him. I'm trying my very best by the spirit of the Lord to break off the strongholds of your life, especially the religious ideas and opinions that says you can sin more or less every day and be right with God. That is the biggest lie that's been told since, since, uh, since Satan told Eve, you will not surely die in, in Genesis chapter 3. You, you will surely die. You said you'll die. Huh? We once were slaves to sin, but now we're slaves to righteousness, slaves right. of God. And we have fruit unto holiness and the end thereof everlasting life. You know, I'm quoting this verse of Scripture, right? I'm not making this up as I go. You know what verse of Scripture I'm quoting? Romans 6. Uh-huh, what verse? It's 22. Come on, man. You're good. You're, you're catching up. Let's go now. You need to get the Word of God in you because people are going to deceive you. People will deceive you. People will lie and wait to deceive you. I mean, to tell you right now, if you come all looking really nice, a little bit taller, got a nice suit on, got a nice smile, very charismatic, you can just say a couple, throw a couple of verses of scripture in there, tell a long yarn, tell a big, huge, giant lie. People just sitting there gullible. People in the church in America are the most gullible people. I mean, goodness gracious, I, I wish we could get some more of the smart folks from out there in the world to get saved, come in, quit being so gullible. Are you listening to me? Start understanding exactly what God said and say, I'm going to do it like he said it. I'm going to do what he said to do. 
Huh? God anointed you with the Holy Ghost. And I mean, he anointed you with a special anointing, special mantle. Huh? He anointed you with the mantle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, there's no question that the relationship of Elijah and Elisha is there definitely clearly a clear type of Christ in the church. When the mantle came upon Elisha, Elisha set his heart on the same anointing that Elijah had, but he wanted a double of it. He wanted a double of it. Jesus gives us a double. In fact, he gives us an unlimited double. He gives us an immeasurable double. He says, these works shall you do also in greater works than these. That's a double. Huh? And that's an immeasurable double. <laughs> Hallelujah. Elisha did twice the miracles that Elijah did. You can go count them. You can count up every one of them. He did twice. The Lord made sure that all of the accounting was done properly. Huh? If I take one day in the life of Jesus Christ, like in Matthew chapter 11, one day in the life of Jesus Christ, when John sent disciples over to see if Jesus was the Christ or should we look for another. Self same hour, cured many of their diseases. He says, the blind saw, the deaf heard, the crippled walk. Those who were diseased with things like leprosy were cleansed. Ah. And the dead were raised to life again. And the cell same hour said, go tell John what you see and what you hear. And the gospel was preached to the poor. And he said, blessed is everyone who's not offended in me. And he said, you, that's just one day. I mean, if all the miracles which Jesus did, if all the things which he, which he revealed out of heaven were written, well, as John said, I suppose not the whole world. The whole world could not contain the books that should be about him. I want you to think about this, people. There is a life that you're not living. I'm going to say this to you. Listen to me. I'm not going to just point out the problem. I'm going to give you the remedy and the cure. There's a life that you're not living because you're not hungry for it. You're not desperate for it. You, you're happy. Listen, if you're, if you're happy like you are, if you're not desperate for more of the anointing, you're not going to get any more. Huh? You're not desperate to be used by God. You're never going to be used by God. I've watched so many people in the church, even in this church, been around for a long time. They've never gotten it. They've never gotten it. We love them. They are friends. They've just never gotten it. They've been born again, but they've just never gotten it. They've never understood how to move in to relate a viable relationship with the Holy Ghost so that heaven begins to be revealed in their life beyond just some introductory level of knowing Jesus. I mean, praise God for everybody's salvation. We're happy with that. But look, reality of it is we need a mighty move of God to turn the tide of what's going on in the world today to see any kind of change come to the United States of America, the Western society. If there's any hope of things being saved, some, somebody's, besides me, going to have to start pursuing the power of God. Of course, there are many, but they're kind of scattered out all over the place. You know, a few up there in Florida, a few up there in New Jersey, a few up there in Canada, a few up there in Kansas, a few over there. Come on. Get us all together in one room. Watch out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mangesh to Koronapate. Well, ha! you know what happens when you get an anointing from heaven? You get this supernatural mantle of divine power and grace. I mean, an unlimited realm, not just a limited realm. I mean, you look at the hunger and the passion that was re re revealed in Elisha's life as he's following Elijah. He was not up and down. He stuck around all the time. He was pursuing something for which he was willing to give up everything else that he had to have it. Yeah. And then sat around and complained about it. Oh, you don't understand. I gave up so much to follow you. He never heard any of that mess. I'm sure that, I'm sure that Elijah is tough enough and rough enough just to kick him out and say, man, I don't even want to be hanging out with you no more. Because he was a, kind of, he was a tough guy. He was. And, um, but, you know, praise God, Elisha wasn't that kind of a man. He was a valiant man. And look what happened when Joshua received anointing from Moses. You know, one of the things about Joshua that you want to have in your life you want to have this as a characteristic in your life. If you want more from God, let me listen to me. Are you listening to me? Yes. You want more from God, you need to have this characteristic in your life. You need to recognize that those who don't depart from the presence of the Lord 
who are passionate about his presence always receive something that no one else gets. It's like Evan Roberts said to his pastor at the age of 12 years old, because of all the great revivals that took place in Wells, it's like you could put it on the calendar about every 35, 40 years, another great revival would come in Wells, starting at about the first part of 1700s. Another great revival, another great revival. The Great Revivals of Wells is a good read. It's a great book, The Great Revivals of Wells. So Evan Roberts says to his pastor, he said, what have I got to do to be able to get in one of those revivals? Because, you know, he was 12 years old, and they were, that, it, that had happened about 20 years, a great revival that happened in Wells about 20 years before he came into this world. <laughs> and his pastor said, well, you need, to be up, you need to be in the meeting every time. Every time the doors are open, be in the meeting. Be a part of everything that's going on in the church. And it, because you don't know when that divine opportunity is going to come. But when that, and his, his pastor was an old guy. His pastor had lived through a couple of the revivals. He said, but there's this season in God, there's this moment in God that only those who are desperately hungry are going to get it because only those who are desperately hungry are going to be at all the meetings and are, are, going to in, are going to encounter that moment in God, that suddenly in God. Huh? I, you know, there was 500 brethren that went up, uh, that you read, we read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that were there when Jesus went up and departed out of this out of this present world up into heaven. But only 120 of them showed up at, uh, on, on the day of Pentecost in the upper room. Can you just imagine what the other 380 were saying? Huh? Come on now. I mean, it wasn't like it was just one opportunity because it was still an outpouring of God, but there's seasons of God. There's moving. There's moving. Evan Roberts so happened to be the leader of one of the greatest moves of God that ever took place in the nation of Wells. It, that move of God that lasted for six months began September 28, 1904, swept the nations of the world. Huh. I know what I'm going to get. I know that I only have to stand and look at people who are unwilling to go all the way with God for so long. And then all of a sudden, Father just takes it and he promotes the thing to another level. Huh? But then when Father promotes it to another level, things, the dynamics of things radically change. I want to encourage you people, seek the Lord right now. It's a great, great moment in time to seek the Lord. And I'm talking about making him first. Not second, not third, not fourth, not fit him in. Hey, the schedule's pretty big. What say the Lord Jesus? Here, let me get my day timer out. We'll check. What was that? What time was that? Uh, well... How about, how about 30 minutes after that? I've got an opening. You can't prioritize God. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to say, you're going to have to make yourself fully available to be his servant, to be his slave. Anybody want to be that? Anybody, anybody want to be a slave of the Lord? I'm a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been purchased by him. Amen. <laughs> he came and redeemed me with his blood. Hallelujah. Broke every claim, invalidated, eradicated every claim that Satan had against me. See, Satan still tries to lay charge against me. I just run to Jesus, and Jesus goes, uh uh, you know nothing here. You know nothing here. Just pulls me around behind him and says, You ain't got nothing here, man. And you want that. You want that now so you can have it later. Don't wait to the last minute because you ain't going to have it then. Huh? You're not going to have it there. So I said, I'm just waiting to my deathbed. You know what? It ain't going to happen for you because you planned it. It ain't going to happen. It's a hardness of hearts, a deceitfulness. Huh? It ain't going to happen. Dear people, just to seek the Lord today, right now, you've given a divine opportunity to run, flee to, flee from the wrath of God, lay hold upon the mercy of grace of God. Understand that wherever the Holy Ghost is moving. The fear of the Lord is there. Where there the fear of the Lord is there, you hate arrogance and you hate pride and you hate the fraud way and you hate every evil thing. Wherever the fear of the Lord is, you, there is wisdom. There is a good understanding. There is a knowledge. His secret are, is with them that fear Him. And it's wonderful to have to know His secrets, to know those things that are hidden from the rest of humanity. 
to understand how easy it is to access his presence, to realize how much he loves us, how much he claims us, to realize how, how he's so on our side that if we fail or if we sin and we run to him, if our heart is overwhelmed, we, 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 we go to the rock. The Holy Spirit is leading us to Christ Jesus where we can get refreshed from the water that flows out of that wonderful realm of his presence. And, and, and say, but say, if you don't know that, Satan's going to come along and say, oh, you cut off from the presence of God. Don't even try to talk to him. He ain't going to listen to you, oh, you rascal, yeah, yeah. terrible thing. And you know, you, then you all laid down with sin, condemnation, overwhelmed, sorted out by the powers of darkness. You need to get a place where you don't even listen to those voices, man. I only hear the voice of the Spirit of the living God calling you to come to Christ Jesus. He'll wash you, he'll cleanse you, he'll change you. Listen, God will never accept you. Somebody says, oh, if you love me, you'll accept me like I am. You're an idiot. You don't even know who you are. Why is somebody else supposed to accept you for all the nonsense and mess you in? God doesn't even accept you for who you are. He'll call you, who you are, for who you are and demand that you become just like him. Huh? Listen, and I know women have that disease. It's a woman disease. If you love me, it's, it's a woman disease. It's true. You need to change. Listen to me. You need to change. Yeah. You want to be like him. God is giving you the opportunity. Listen to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is giving you the opportunity. I'm making sure she's looking at the Bible, not texting somebody. God <laughs> has given you the opportunity to be just like him. You got an exchange. He said, I give you my life. I'll take yours. The nasty, terrible thing. I take yours and I give you mine. And he took ours and put it to death and buried it. Praise God. <laughs> you don't have a graveyard digging yourself up. Man. If you love me. <laughs> Christ Jesus has love for you that passes all knowledge. He doesn't have all of this other stuff that men want to call love. The love of Christ, Jesus, it was manifested in Him being willing to lay down His life at Calvary's cross for us, to bear our sins in His own body on the tree. Just before that, even just willingness to leave heaven and take on the robes of sinful flesh, to walk around a bunch of, around a, a bunch of folks on this earth who just hate and, and always ridiculing and pointing the finger and always aggravated, huh? Speaking evil and always saying bad things, taking all those reproaches and all those accusations laid upon him. And, and of course, he was really different. He really brought it out because you, wherever he went, the odor, the smell of the fear of the Lord could be smelled. And that, I'm, that'll, that'll stir up some devils real quick. Uh -huh. <laughs> that stir up some about I'm telling you, that's just stir up some serious responses. Huh? They hated him without a cause. And he did all of that. He left the glory of heaven and the riches of that which he's known, not just for a thousand years, not for a quintillion years. Eighteen zeros, right? Not on and on, we keep going, right? Twenty-four zeros. I don't remember what that one is. Huh? For an undefined, ageless, forever and ever time. He left all of that because he loved us so much. That's the kind of love the Father... That's the kind of love that you want to grow into. Huh? So you could say, if you love me, you'll love me for the love I'm going to have in 50 years. If you'll love me, you're going to be... You're going to love me for what I'm going to be as I grow in God. I can respond to that in a very, hey man, I'll do that. In fact, I'm looking at you, loving you like that for right at this very moment. I'm loving you for all the glorious love and joy. There won't be a sad countenance anymore. There won't be a sad countenance anymore. There will be a shine. God wants a shine to come upon your face. A beauty, a splinter. People try to cover it up with makeup. <laughs> The Lord wants to cause you to shine with his glory. But that's gonna, that's gonna, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to quit living in the shadows of sin. You have to quit living 
in the atmosphere of the demonic to shine with that glory, to smell with the fear of the Lord, to have the odor of His presence. The fear of the Lord is a sweet, beautiful smell. Exceeds all the smells, beautiful smells of this world. Exceeds the beautiful smells of the roses and the, the honeysuckle and of all those various different flowers when, they, when you're in a beautiful garden and it's really thick, late spring. That smell, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's the sweet smell of His presence, the sweet smell of His divine goodness and of His glory. There's no death there. There's no stink there. There's no sorrow there. There's no sadness there. There's no sighing there. There's no ugliness there in the actions of men. Doesn't this sound good? I mean, doesn't this sound like, hey, I want to go to that. I want to do that. I want to love, I want to know the love that, I don't want to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge because Paul said, there you're filled with all the fullness of God. Come on, man, know that. You know that. You're never going to be pointing the finger complaining about something somebody else did. Not be dissatisfied, disgruntled, upset. It's just not going to be. Sunday night, you know, I got radical. I got rad. I just, enemy got, enemy tried to push me around a little bit. And you know what? I just know that he's not allowed to do that. So I got radical. The atmosphere charged with this love of God. It's charged, supercharged with this love. That's what happened. You know him by his love. You know his people by the love. You know, you know you're walking around in divine grace when you got so much joy you can't hold it back. Amen. Because it gives joy unspeakable, full of glory. So much joy you can't so much joy you can't hold it back. It's like rivers. Hallelujah. Well, Joshua, he he the anoint, the glory of heaven came upon the tabernacle. And the scripture says he didn't depart from the door of the tent. He was captivated by the glory. He was captivated by the glory for about 40 years. Somebody said, oh, a long time. No, man, very short time, actually. When you're captivated by the glory, you didn't even notice. Didn't even notice. Captivated by the glory. I get up in the morning, go over the glory. <laughs> can you imagine what that's like? I can. I can. Because I'm living in the greater glory. Huh? I don't know what was probably about, probably about 5.30. Or so, uh, the Holy, Ghost, Holy Ghost getting me ready for tonight. The, the, the very charges of electrical grace. It's, it's like, it's, it would be like, it's similar to electricity. Getting bolted with electricity, but it doesn't hurt. It feels good. <laughs> like. <laughs> I said, I, because I'm, I'm. I'm his minister standing in the midst of his, 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 his church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Singing praises, declaring his word, Hallelujah. standing in his stead to get people ready for the things that Christ Jesus is going to do. One prophetess, she's describing a real event. <laughs> and this is wild, but Jeannie Wilkerson. And she's just, they're all sitting in a meeting, a bunch of Holy Ghost people. And it was, a, it was just before one of the great moves of God that took place. And she saw Jesus come riding through the wall on the horse. She said, what are you doing? What, what, what's happening? He said, I'm just here inspecting the troops, getting them ready. Getting ready. Because he was getting ready to, it was getting ready to be a great outpouring that took place in the, in the late 60s. It was a great outpouring. And he had men of God and women of God who had been prepared for the day and time who would stand in his place and represent him the way they, he was supposed to be represented, who wasn't all caught up in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life who were not overwhelmed by interacting and listening to demon spirits. They were captivated by the glory. I'm captivated by the glory. That's why I want to be in church all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then you know what happens? You get enlarged. Your heart gets enlarged. You get a capacity to receive more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Pop had the capacity to see more. We call him Pop Seymour. But we get the we, we, pot. We get the capacity to receive more. We're going to be the receive mores instead of the see mores. And he gets his capacity to, to receive more as we stand in his presence. That's what happens. Huh? You just give yourself to this kind of life. Give yourself to waking up in the morning and praying in the Holy Ghost. Mark, mark, the, mark the privilege of, of speaking in tongues more than you all uh, as, uh, as better than being a trillionaire or better than being the, the king of the world, better than being whatever it is that you aspire to be. What is it that you aspire to be, by the way? 
I mean, I can understand if Bill Gates has got to give up everything to follow Jesus, but what are you giving up? I mean, really, come on, really. What is it that people are giving up that have such a hard time walking away from? I don't get it. Do you get it? I don't get it. I don't get it. In fact, you know, I don't care who you are. If you got, if you owned all the world, it's all yours. Still, the one glimpse of who Jesus really is, give up that thing. Just instantly give it up. To have that life is far better. To have his life. It is the light that lights every man that comes to the world. Everybody wants that light. They can just get a glimpse of it. They might, they, they might not with a sincere heart will be willing to go all the way, but when that light shines, everybody knows they've had an encounter with God. Joshua had an encounter with God. It enlarged his capacity. When, when now when Moses is about ready to die, he says to Moses, get Joshua, lay your hand on him. Impart that glory, that splendor that I've given you. Impart it to him. Hallelujah. And you know, when you, when you see... When you see Moses giving Joshua instruction by the Spirit of the Lord, he keeps saying to him, verse 6, Joshua 1, 6, 8, 10. He keeps saying, you can turn in your Bibles quickly if you want to. It's on the web. There's, there, on, right now on Twitter, there's a link. You can see it on the Facebook and on the web. Uh, and, and a few other sites. I can't remember exactly where it is. There's a link. It shows you all the verses of Scripture that I'm speaking while I'm doing it which I praise God for the people who are laboring to do that. Because people, are, they're, 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 people have been deceived. They've been lied to. And, um, you know, they, they believe in a bunch of things that's not in the Bible. It's not at the Word of God. And I'm not talking about peripheral doctrines here. I'm right at the very thick of it, right at the very vein of it, right at the very heart of those things which are most important to follow, the change of life. In other words, we leave a demonic life, a fallen life, a life dead in trespass and sin, to come step into the life of God, to live in the life of His fullness, to live in the life of the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to live by the Spirit, to speak by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. Have a changed heart, new heart, new spirit. Have His Spirit on the inside of us. Amen. Praise God, this is the new covenant. I write my laws in your heart and in your parts. I cause you to know them. Hebrews 8.10, right? 1 Corinthians 6.16. 6, are you getting all these verses of Scripture? Well, they're, they're logged for you. Amen. Amen. Created in new and righteousness and true holiness. Praise God. That's me. Hallelujah. But in Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 6, 8, 10. You listen to me. The Lord charged Joshua, said, be strong and very courageous. You want to walk in this anointing? You'll be strong and very courageous. I said, be strong and very courageous. I said, be strong and very courageous. Huh? You know what? I'm not going to struggle with men. No. It, it was, somebody hits me. I was turning the other cheekbone and hit me again. It's whatever. I'm not going to struggle with men. Don't need to. Weapons are my warfare, not carnal. But they God power, mighty. Second Corinthians chapter 10, 4, for those of you who aren't keeping up. Huh? It's a, it's a very unique uh, derivative, the dunamis. And uh, it's, it's really, literally, it's not, it doesn't literally say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. It literally says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but God. God power. Amen. Amen. That's called the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Okay? God power. God power. It's, uh, I'm being recorded. So, making sure I got the right word. It's do nomos to feel. God power. That's, if you're reading the Bible in Greek, that's what it says. Do nomos, do nomos to feel. God power. My weapons. It's your weapons. Your weapons are so incredible that you can tread over all the power of Satan and he cannot harm you, hurt you. Somebody say, we got to sin more or less every day. You are deceived and overthrown by what you believe and cursed by what you spoke. Because the Bible didn't say that. That's not what we received from heaven. Jesus said, I give you power. To tread over all the power of Satan. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. I'm going with what Jesus said. I'm going to make sure that all of my life and experience are conformed to him. I'm going to have the boldness that he's given me. 
He's get, he, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you get filled with boldness. Remember when they were being threatened? Well, look, there's threatening voices. Those same demonic intercessions, those same demonic voices are all filled throughout the atmosphere. Right now, Satan is the prince and the power of the atmosphere. His voice is heard everywhere in this world. Behold the threatenings. Grant your servant's boldness by stretching forth your hand. The signs and wonders should be performed by your holy child, Jesus. Suddenly, the place was shaking. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, man. That's the prayer meeting I want. Round table prayer meeting. Everybody get to have their say. Come on, forget about it. How you literally do it? Come on, man. Come on, let's get serious here. Uh, Amen. Serious in Jesus' name. Furthermore, (laughs) said in 1 John 5, 18, we know everybody who's born of God does not sin. Keeps himself for the wicked one cannot touch him. I mean, God has given us so much power and authority, Satan can't touch us. But you know what? That is not the Christian experience. They knew that. We don't know that. In fact, we know the opposite in this day and time because we're more of the world than not of the world. God said, come out from among them. Be separate, says God, I receive you. That's not a scripture for the Amish. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Amen. Right after the Lord said that he would walk in us, dwell in us and walk in us. We'd be his temple, he'd dwell in us. Can you imagine how Joshua would have felt about that? Could you imagine how Elisha would have felt about that? Can you imagine? The Lord says to him, charges him, now you're going to have to be strong and very courageous to walk in this anointing. Be strong. Meditate in the word day and night so that you may observe to do everything that has been spoken. Otherwise, if you don't live by the word, you're going to live by the voice that is in the atmosphere. I pray you come on Friday night so you begin to get some discernment. So you can begin to discern between good and evil. Paul said to the Hebrews, your senses are exercised to discern good and evil because of your utilizing the word of God, because of your continual use of, Huh? You don't let this words of this covenant depart out of your mouth. You continually speak these words of life. It's by these words of life that God created the universe. These words of life became flesh. Jesus Christ is the revelation, proclamation, definition, declaration of who God himself is. That's the word, the living word. Amen. And he said, my word is spirit and life. Amen. It's living. It's powerful. It's not black ink on white paper. Powerful. It's living. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It'll make you strong. It'll fill you with the power of divine grace. I've been born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God. The word of faith, which is nigh me in my in my heart and in my mouth, speaking out of me. That's the means by which a miracle, uh, the greatest miracle that could possibly take place, a miracle of transformation, a miracle of change, of going from Satan being my father to God being my father, to having a nature like demon spirits, to having a nature like the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, yeah. this got to be valuable to you. Other not, otherwise, it'll never be a living reality. You'll die in your religion. You'll die in your philosophical beliefs. You listening to me? Listen to me. Listen. Look, if there's ever a time there has got to be a people of God who arise up with the authority of the Spirit of the living God to do those things which only Christ Jesus, to cooperate with the Holy Ghost, to do those things that only Christ Jesus could do. It's now. If I'm, going to, if I'm going to exercise authority over demon spirits, I'm going to be bold and very courageous. People let Satan run right over top of them, give them all kinds. They let Satan take advantage over them. My uh, dear friend who has uh, Christ for the Nations, Korea, she, she, she's a dear, wonderful woman to God. Deborah Ho, I mean, my goodness, what a woman, what a woman of faith. She graduated from the Christ for the Nations back in the late 60s. I mean, she's just been a champion in South Korea and in Asia. She emails me yesterday, you know, and I know what happens. I know, what ha- I know how the enemy comes to people up. He says, I-, I need a prophetic word. I need you to prophesy to me. I go, I said, get up and run. 
get up and stomp some stuff down to the ground and get it done. Huh? You start getting all weak and timid, Satan's going to run right over the top of you. And if you're going to do these things, you're going to have to be bold and very courageous. Be strong, strength of the Lord and power of his might. I've been strengthened by the word of God. I've been given divine instruction. I'm not, I'm not halt, halting between two opinions. I'm not wondering how much of the world I want, how much of heaven. I've made up my mind. God's made up my mind. He's come and transformed me. He's laid hold on me. I've been apprehended by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I live only for divine purpose. I don't want to live for any other purpose. I hate all the things that people rush after, all the things that belong to this world in the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye of the pride of life. My goodness, Christ Jesus will change you and you won't want it anymore. That's what happened to me. Come on, dear people. And then you become an ambassador of Christ, a co-inheritor with Christ Jesus to go everywhere and destroy the works of the devil, cast out demon spirits to run right down the middle of everything Satan's trying to do and bring it into it. To go everywhere conquering making disciples out of all nations. That's what the Lord told us to go do. Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go now in my name. Amen. 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 That's strong. That's bold. Amen. Amen. Humility. Humility is how you, react with, how you react and interact with the living God. The only visual, good visual I know for humility is soft clay in the hands of the potter. And I don't have my own will. I don't want my own will. I want his will. Lord, I will your will. I tell him that. I remind him of that every day. I believe people reminding God of things every day is called prevailing prayer. I believe those petitions are granted. They're like Luke chapter 18 petitions. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Uh, I want you to look at another verse of scripture with me here. You know, I, I'm really excited about something that's going to happen. The Lord's really, the Lord's encouraged me. We are, you know, from time to time, we, I mean, they're always pray for the sick. People are always getting healed of something. It's always something happening in the spirit. Signs, wonders, miracles. But every once in a while, I mean, it's just powerful. I mean, it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God in his grace and mercy allows us extraordinary things. And the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me the other day. He said, I'm, gonna do, I'm getting ready to do some extraordinary things. I'm getting ready to create, recreate every cell in certain people's bodies. Yeah. I mean, we're, I'm talking about, I don't care what the disease is. I don't care what it what, what. I'm mean, those kind of miracles. It's the same as being raised from the dead. Every cell in your body is affected by it. Now, I live in that. I'm not guessing on that. I'm not hoping for one day. I live in it. I live in the expectation of it. So I give myself continually, lay my hands on sick, praying for the sick, thanking the Lord for the works and miracles in my life. I don't say, oh, God, please cause us. Oh, how long? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> because he gave it to us. I'm going to thank him for it. Say, thank you, Father. Huh? Oh, Lord, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, Lord, what's wrong with me? Why is it that I can't say, Lord, thank you for the gift of interpretation of tongues or whatever it is. And I just I recommend to everyone, give thanks to God for everything and call it yours already because he gave it to you. Amen. And it's a prevailing prayer. It's a, it's a prevailing prayer with God. It's a, it's, a, it's a prayer of Luke chapter 18. Learn from the widow. This is why men ought to always pray and not to faint. Amen. Amen. I found that God is faithful concerning his word. And you increase. As you increase with the manifest presence of God. Increase with the increase of God. In other words, Paul said it. Amen. Amen. And here's what else I know. There's no way that you're going to be the same. I don't care how far away you are from what I'm talking about tonight. These words will haunt you. They will haunt you. Sin will be so uncomfortable and tormentuous for you. I hope that's good news. I hope it's going to be good news for you that you are going to be so condemned and convicted and overwhelmed with despair if you sin. Isn't that good? 
Hallelujah. Then just run to Jesus. That's right. When my heart is overwhelmed, just run to Jesus and he'll cleanse you. And you'll go, I don't ever want to go back over there. And do that. I don't ever go back over there and do that evil thing again. And that's good. That's good because he's perfected everything that concerns you. This one thing you can be confident of is that he who began a good work and you will finish it so long as you're participating. You've got to get out of your mind, out of your ideas, right over here into the mind of Christ and the ideas communicated by the Word of God. Because I'm telling you, you listen to me. There's been a lot of nonsense, a lot of pollution, a lot of mixture, and it's going to keep you from having this good life. Father's not looking for people who are playing imitation with what men are doing. Uh -uh. He's looking for those who, who are followers of Christ Jesus, who mimic, do exactly what Christ Jesus did. Hallelujah. I'm not going to get, I won't get lost. You know what? I've watched this. I will not get lost in the expression of a revival. I will not. Because then you're now predicting what God's going to do and you fossilize in that movement. Uh -uh. It's constantly enjoying the flows of God, the refreshings of God and fully benefit from it. Not resisting the Holy Ghost in any way, fully benefit from it, but in expectation of the exceeding greatness of his power that is given to us and, and the things that Father wants to do in our lives that are unimaginable. Huh? I'm going to keep my heart just wanting Jesus. See, as long as I keep my heart just wanting Jesus and the full manifestation of Jesus, then I'm ready for all the gifts that come with him and all the manifestations of his spirit that he provides when he steps into the room. If you have the capacity to receive. Now remember, the people at Nazareth did not have the capacity to receive. Jesus stepped in the room with fullness of power of God and they received nothing. Nothing. There was other places he stepped into the room. They were religious and they said he's got a devil. And all they did was get mad. Jesus preached a sermon. One of the most anointed sermons that had ever been preached in the world. As a matter of fact, you could say it was the most anointed sermon that had ever been preached in all of the world. And the results of that sermon was they took him out to try to kill him, throw him off the cliff. And he did, and he did, did, this, he did a disappearing thing. Jesus disappeared five times in the Bible. Disappeared, disappeared. Scripture says passed through the midst of them. That's called disappeared. Traitor works. I'm looking forward to the things that God's going to do. You're going to have to get yourself in a lot of trouble to have that manifestation of the Spirit there. Amen. Amen. I believe I had that manifestation of the Spirit in Mbaba. Because that's a tough place in just, you know, on, on the periphery of Cairo. And there's all these fundamental radicalist people there, you know. And they say, oh, you can't go over there. Nobody, everybody hates Americans there. And I was like dressed like this, you know, American. <laughs> and they dress like you dressed 2,000 years ago, you know. Not quite that long ago. Most, a lot of them, the younger people dress, you know, a little more modern, but not so much in Mbaba or places like Minya. And, and that's like two, going back 2,000 years in time. I'm sure I disappeared. Nobody saw me. I was, I was on a mission. I didn't care, I didn't, I didn't care if it was going to cost me my life. There was a bunch of young girls who just received Jesus come out of prostitution. The Lord told me to go over there and speak the word and see him get baptized so they'd be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And so I was on my way. Amen. Amen. Now you have to get yourself, you have to get yourself in the big middle of it. You want these things to happen? Some of you have to go. Uh-huh. Some of you have a hard time showing up to church. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm, just, I'm, I'm moving on. I've been moving on. Huh? Uh, it's like Keith Green said, Jesus, Jesus rose from the dead. His people can't get out of bed. On Sunday morning, Jesus rose up from the dead. The Lord had to take him out. He was too needed in heaven, I guess. Could you turn with me to 2 Timothy? In the name of Jesus. Are you going to change? Yes. You change? Yes. Are you purposely going to make adjustments in your life to be like and follow Christ Jesus, the way he described for us to be like him and follow him? Are you going to make personal adjustments in your life to walk in the Holy Ghost and to give yourself to the manifestation of the Spirit? You have to decide. Because if you don't, what you're going to do is you're going to have a religious thing going on that you believe that somehow Jesus is your Savior 
and that you're following him and obeying him, but you continue to practice the things that are in the world and there's no change. And what's going to happen is you'll become more rooted in that deception and you'll die in your sins. You will. I think the worst thing about a modern doctrine, there's always been a belief that, you know, men can't stop from sinning, but there has always been in that same kind of a belief structure, it's been a fraction of the church, not all the church, but a fraction of the church, that in that belief structure, sin is a terrible thing and you better repent hard, okay? And so, but now that evolved over the past 40 years into, oh, we're all going to sin more or less every day, don't worry about it. So what does that do? That hardens the heart. It hardens the heart to the deceitfulness of sin. It blinds the understanding. And now you lie and you don't feel any conviction about it. And God said, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. That's what Jesus said. That, those words came out of his mouth. He was so radical about it. He said, if your eye offends you, because any sin is an offense to life, the life of God, Pluck it out, for it's better for you to enter into life having one eye than to be cast into hell having two. That's how radical Jesus is about it. Now, you get that into your belief structure, and you're going to change. Uh, you buy into this deceptive lie that you can just sin more or less every day. People sit down on a daily basis and watch television programs that are designed by the spirit of darkness to create a thing called lasciviousness, to be aroused to lustful desires. Listen to me. Jesus said very clearly that everybody who does this is a, has the fruits that testify that they are of the devil. Paul said in his list in, in, um, in, um, in uh, Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 19, he said, anybody who does these things have no inheritance of the kingdom of God. Jesus said very clearly in his address in Revelation 21, he says concerning the whoremongers, which is the word porneo, which literally means to be a fornicator or to be carried away with sexual immorality. Porneo, that's what it means. Yeah, and rightly so. That's where you get pornographic from, and there's too many people involved in that snare. That will take you to hell, absolutely, and it's got to cease. You've got to cease from it. Okay, the Lord will wash you, cleanse you. He'll give you, grant to you the gift of repentance and give you the power never to go back. But if you have a recircling, recycling, continual, going back to it, believe me, you're coming under the snare and bondage of an enemy. God will not be mocked. You sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption, destruction. Believe me, you don't cut it off. And if you can't, if you can't deal with it, I mean, get rid of your, get rid of whatever, your smartphone, your computer, your iPad, whatever it is. Before, people used to have to go out into a public place and be, you know, kind of like confess that they're going to be a part of the stuff and go to those kinds of places. Now they do. Now it's in people's homes. It's in people's homes. It's in people's homes. It's in people's homes. And you're going to say that the, you're going to say that the glory of God's there? It's nonsense. That's everything contrary to what this book, and the revelation of God, teaches. Everything contrary. It's a lie. Jesus said. He said, those who overcome shall inherit all things, but without are the doubtful, the unbelieving, the porneo, huh? That's what he said. The unclean person, everyone who speaks a lie and loves a lie, their inheritance is the lake of fire. That's what he says. That's Jesus talking. What is it, Revelation 21.7 or is it 21.11? 21.7. Thank you. I love people getting into the word. Hold on to the word. Keep the word. The word keep you. Huh? The word if I hid in my heart, then I not sin against you. Boy. Uh, stop. What's that? Psalm 119 verse Amen. Praise God. You just keep keep it coming. I'm happy with that. We'll produce that in you. You know that? I everybody I knew as a young boy who operated in the word of knowledge only quoted the word of God. They didn't do all this crazy stuff that people are doing today. They quoted the scripture. Every time Jesus ever come to me and spoken to me, he's always quoted the scripture. If they speak any word, if they speak a word that is not according to this word, is, uh, if, they, if, they, if they speak and it's not the word of God that they're speaking, it's because there is no light in them. I'm not interested in all the fairy tales. I'm not interested in all the grandiose stories about what God's plan for you to be if you do this and do that and don't you know? Uh, forget about that. Speak the word. His word is power. The name of Jesus is the power of the authority that changes. Listen, get rid of that nonsense. There's a deceptive realm there. I speak the word. And then out of speaking the word, then there's an application. Here's what the Lord is saying concerning you. 
right now. This is what I'm telling you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, I hear the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. I heard the Lord saying, fan the flame. Huh? You hear that? Fan the flame. Amen. Uh, doesn't that sound better than stir up the gift of God? It's literally fan the flame. What do you do when a fan the flame? It depends on how much fuel you got there. Because if you fan the flame, we were just fanning the flame out on the ranch because we were burning a bunch of stuff. And my wife got a little bit concerned because the flames would go away. She said, we can get some forest on fire. No, I said, babe, it's too wet. It's too cold. Fan the flame. How much fuel you got there? We've got an unlimited realm of fuel that will burn with a ferocious fire of God. I'm telling you right now, that's bold. That's strong. That's confident. I am persuaded. <laughs> I seen something today that the Lord wanted me to buy. I turned to my wife. I said, that's, that's our, God told me, that's it. As soon as I said that, and it's a lot of money. As soon as I said that, the anointing of God comes upon me. I'm overwhelmed with the glory of God. <laughs> and just all you can do is walk around just rejoicing. I mean, because it's Papa's will. But so many people, what they happen to do, what they do is they get in their mind. Because you calculate it. You're all in your head. It's not become a part of your heart. You've not moved out of a fleshly, earthly realm over into the realm of the Spirit where nothing is impossible. I'm telling you, there's a transition for you here tonight. You don't have to wait till next week, next month, next year. You just begin to take a hold of the Word of God right now. I don't care if you're living on the streets and you got nothing. Take a hold of the Word of God and begin to proclaim it and declare these things and watch as the Holy Spirit will cause faith to rise on the inside of you. And you'll begin to speak those things which God says and the authority of heaven will bring it to pass. And he's the Holy Spirit who does that. He's the authority of heaven right now. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the, he's the one who's come here to be with us. He's the comforter. I know I'm around him because I'm being comforted. Amen. Even when I'm being corrected, I'm being comforted. He said, now, what are you doing? Don't do that. The, the, the Sunday, Sunday, I don't know what time it was. I think, yeah, I was watching the game. 49ers against the uh, Seahawks. And so the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, how long are you going to let Satan kick you around like that? How long are you going to take that? I quit watching the 49ers Seahawks. I got up, and everybody knows in my house when I'm on the path <laughs> because my voice it's really very loud. I do not need an amplification system. It's just this dynamic of something Papa has done inside of me. Huh? Two people, you're going to have to understand. You've been being run over top of. You've been abused. You've been lied to. You've been taking stuff. You have no business submitting to and allowing to run ruin in your life. It's time for you to get it. It's time for you to get it. No, it's time for you to get it. Come on. After such a long time as this, hard not your heart. Listen to his voice. Listen to what he's saying. You're going to have to be willing to step out beyond the realms of what you can do. There's a faith realm. It's a real realm. It's a heavenly realm. But you've got you to have an encounter with Jesus for it to be real. Otherwise, you're going to live by your perception. You're going to live by your calculations. You're going to live by the, by the genius of your mind. <laughs> Uh-huh. And you're not going to get very far that way. I don't care how bright you are. Uh-huh. You can be as bright as Satan is. You're still not going to get very far. And in his brightness is going to be a bunch of pride manifested. Huh? But in this place of turning yourself over to believe what God said in his word like a little child. It's not my idea. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing my ideas anymore. This, this is the idea I'm doing right here. I'm doing this idea right here. Amen. Love your enemies. Bless them. That's the idea I'm going with right there. Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going with that one. Hallelujah. And love the brethren, even as I loved you. Amen. Uh, it's like the, the same love the Father loved me with. The same love I've loved you. That's, that's our idea. Here's what I'm going to go with. Are you there, Second Timothy? Here's what the Lord has to say to you. Hallelujah. Um, people, you got to come on, come on Friday night because I'm going to talk to you about things that grieve the Holy Ghost. It doesn't go well when you grieve the Holy Ghost. 
and, and there's a, there are things that are in behavioral patterns of people's lives that they've never identified as, as a self-interest that is keeping them from denying themselves. They hold on, clutching their self. I see a manifestation sometimes of people worshiping, and they're not worshiping the Lord. They're literally holding on tightly to themselves. You want to just let go of all that mess. You want to learn how to deny yourself in a very practical way. You want to learn how to say, look, you know what? I'm no longer living. It's Christ that lives with total abandonment. I am going to just dare to believe that I am a representative of heaven and I can do everything that the word of God commissioned me to do. Christ Jesus said that I could do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to call things which are not as though they were. I'm going to do the impossible. I'm going to say, Mount, get out of the way. Tree be plucked up by the roots, planted in the sea. I'm going to do these things. Amen. You need to do that. Quit holding on yourself. You have the, live the life of Jesus. It's far better. It's a far better one. Say it's a far better one. Far better. Amen. 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 You need to fill this house with the praises of the Holy Ghost rather than being all bottled up when you come in here. Huh? Then we got to preach the word over you for about an hour and then suddenly things, the atmosphere starts changing. Don't live that way. Don't live in and out. Stay in. Huh? Don't walk in and out of the realms of glory. Stay in the realms of glory. Ain't God good? How long he, how long suffering is? Any good? He's long suffering. Elijah wants to say, bring it all to an end. The Lord's like, no, I'm not bringing it all to an end. He's 900 years, about 850 years out. He says, no, I'm going to bring Messiah. I'm going to bring Christ the Lord. Huh? You come up here and you wait. I know you for the last days. You're prophet for the last days. Huh? I ministered in a church when I was really young. They said, you know what? Our, our denomination is not ready for you. You prophet for the last days. <laughs> and you need to mellow out. You'll mellow out with years. And the fact is, I haven't mellowed. I've gotten, I've gotten more red hot. I'm more radical there now than I was then when I was telling them to burn their ACDC cassette tapes, 8-track. I was telling them they need to do just what they did at Ephesus when they, oh, when they came out with all their witchcraft books and all their books of sorcery and they burned them. They was having revival. Go get all of your music that was born out of hell, all the other demonic paraphernalia you got in your bedroom and wherever else. Let's have a bonfire right out in front of the meeting, right out in front of the church. Huh? My wife was in those meetings in those days was when we first met. I'm just like, we, we ramping it up. Amen. But the Lord says, Elijah, so get up here. You're going to stand up here. from." Uh, so he's been up there with the Lord for about 2,800 years. Because he's coming back. When he comes back, fire will come out of his mouth. Devour the enemies of God. It's going to be a tough sermon. To listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be a tough ministry to sit under, you know. Well, I remember back in the days when we only got rebuked. And <laughs> Well, we only got corrected by the preacher. <laughs> oh, I pray none of you are there in those days. But rather you seated at the, at the table of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The marriage supper of the Lamb. I believe in the resurrection. Amen. Amen. And I believe you, don't, you can't separate the catching away from the resurrection. And it's something a lot of people need to listen to. But that's another subject. Another time. Right now, I got a word for the Lord from the Lord for you. I just want to read out of one of my favorite translations, Green's Literal. And Green devoted his life to this translation. I spent hundreds of hours translating the scripture. And I always use other translations for reference points, English translations for reference points. And I've always been amazed at the accuracy of Green's Literal, as well as the choice of words that he's used. And it's not like Young's literal. You like you read Young's literal and you go, what? You know, he's like, oh, it's Elizabethan English trying to directly translate, you know, Hebrew or Greek, and it's just impossible. This is this is much smoother. So I want I encourage you if you want a good Bible to study, if you're serious about studying, get get this book, get this Bible. And plus, I know that family's trying to, the family right now just trying to cover costs because they don't have a marketing campaign and. And because you don't, they don't have a marketing campaign, they haven't even paid for, the, for this memorial edition. And, you know, there's also 
I mean, Green just he's just a servant of the Lord. It's just amazing. He, he did an he did an amazing service to the church in the twentieth century, and people don't realize it yet. You, hopefully, everyone catch up with it. But Second Timothy chapter one verse six, for which cause I command I I remind you. Forgive me. For which cause I remind you to fan the flame of the gift of God which is in you that was given to you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give to a spirit of a coward. You're not a coward. You could translate this one kind of timid. Huh? Come on, people. You know, before I was full of the Holy Ghost, I used to walk by people that I didn't know either and didn't say anything to them. It was like timid. When I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I was filled with the love of God. I want to know who everybody is. Who are you now? Huh? Because the same spirit in Christ Jesus in me. And he's interested in people. He's interested in everybody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want you to get baptized in the Holy Ghost so you'll have the same action, interaction, and reaction that's manifested in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Look, fan the flame is given to you. Come on, fan the flame. The, you know, when we talk about, when Paul says, quench not the spirit. It's literally, you know, referring to the putting out of a fire. And, and we know that makes good sense, right? To quench, to put out a fire. Because we've been baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire. The very fire of God. The fire that Moses saw in the midst of the thorn bush that was burning there on Mount Sinai. Huh? Where he looked a little closer and looked into that fire and he saw, saw the similitude of a man standing there speaking to him. <clears throat> Which had to be veiled by the fire so that Moses could look and still live. In the school of theology, we call it God's divine overcoat. The fire of his glory. Like a cloud by day, and a fire by pillar of fire by night. Fire came right down into me. That fire is available to come right down into you. Fire of his presence, where he's with us and in us, where he dwells in us, dwells in us. There's a price to pay. Because I don't I tell you right now, though Jesus paid it all at Calvary's cross. These things are still sacred. They're still holy. They're not cheap. They've not been undervalued by God. The Holy Spirit is very sacred to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is very sacred to Jesus. Jesus said, you can say everything you bad about me you want about the Father. But if you say things bad about the Holy Ghost, it won't be forgiven you. It won't be forgiven you. Not in this life and in the next. And somebody asked me, said, why some people don't get healed? Because they blaspheme the Holy Ghost as they still come to church, though. Because they've taken and drinking the cup and eaten the body unwordly. They just come in and still come in at a meeting. See, I had a great fear of the Lord. It was given to me by the new birth, given to me by the presence of the Lord Jesus. I don't know how people do the things they do, how they go walking around and sin in iniquity. How they go walking around carousing with the powers of darkness. How they live in strife and envy. How they conduct themselves in this life like there's no given account. There's given an account. Hey, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Well, let me tell you something else. The fool has also said in his heart or lives like he don't have to give an account. As soon as you have an encounter with Jesus, you'll see him before you. Every one of your deeds will be tried in his presence. You'll know he's there. Huh? I was in my room last night. And, and the Spirit of the Lord came into the room. And I was so overwhelmed with the glory of the Lord. It wasn't last night. It was the night before. It was on, um, it was Monday night. The Spirit of the Lord was just so radically in the room. I knew that whatever I asked, he would do it. You know why? Because I knew he was there. I didn't have to, well, the Bible says you're here. I knew he was there. I felt his presence. I knew he was there. I was talking directly to him. It's another, it's another way of living. That's why it's around this impossible place, this $18 million property here. 
Huh? He just talks to the thought bell. You learn how to walk in that realm. Amen? And you, know, you just move. Move in the place that he gives us. When, you, when you're there talking to him, just talk to him. You spend, see, people want, a, people want a last minute wisdom. They want a last minute relationship. You know what I'm saying? Fire escape relationship. Listen, you live by the word of God. You live in wisdom. Now you're increasing more and more. Live by the word of God. Faith growing in your life. You're increasing it. More and more. It's a lifestyle. It's not, oh, hurry up, oh, God, give me wisdom because i got to make this tough decision. You're not going to get nothing, man. Just don't even make a decision. It's probably going to be wrong. Learn to walk with God. He's not a genie in a bottle. But if he got in you, he'll live on the inside of you. He'll lead you. He'll give you all his insight. He'll give you all his divine glory. Come on now. You need to learn about the God of the Bible. A different kind of God than is being propagated today by the lies of Satan. Huh? By the nonsense going on in people's minds, activities of life. Come on now. Get out of that mess. Get up here and start burning with the divine presence of his goodness. Fan the flame of the gift of God. Amen. Amen. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Gift of life. God didn't give you the spirit of being a coward. Amen. He gave you power. Huh? Look at that. He gave you pow his power, actually. Love. And of discipline. His divine discipline, divine temperance, divine self-control. Huh? I'm not running out. Huh? So he's going to come at you. He's going to come at us with all of his tricks. He's going to come at us with all of his deception. He's a master of deception. He's a master of deception. Angels, mighty in power, who beheld God's glory and was his ministers. For who knew how Undefined, unlimited periods of time. They stood before the Lord doing his business. Satan was able to deceive them. Through his craft, through his tricks, he was able to lead them away. We, we have an indication. We know that he has angels with him of multitude. Okay? The devil and his angels are constantly being referred to. And there's one verse of Scripture, and only one verse of Scripture that says he drew with us to drew one-third of the stars. And so we go, we really go out there on that, you know. Oh, he took one-third of the angels. Well, first of all, we never, if you sound in doctrine, you never make a doctrine out of one verse of Scripture, ever. And especially when it's metaphorical words being used as is described in Revelation 12 where people say that. But we do know that he drew a wet with him through his propaganda and through his merchandising and through his slander and lies against God saying, God doesn't have your best interest in mind, you know? Because you can hear Satan's voice through Absalom. You can hear Satan's voice through the serpent in the garden. God's hiding you, the best from you. You hear his voice. You know what he was saying to the angels. He says it to you too. He's very subtle. He comes in a way you cannot identify him. Paul said he's, he comes as a minister of righteousness as an angel of light. He knows the anointing. Satan knows the anointing. I used to believe, I was raised in revival. I was raised in the name of God. I've been around so many of men of God, women of God that have been mightily used by God. I mean, when I was 12 years old, I'd say, blindfold me, take me into a church. And and then, and I don't, you know, I don't have to see anything, but how the pulpit set up, and I'll tell you what denomination is, what they believe. I mean, because I just rooted in that. That's why I grew up in that. Grew up in revival. Grew up in the move of God. And um, I used to really believe that. I, boy, I know the anointing. I can sort it out. And one day the Lord let me encounter a situation where, where a lying evil spirit came, manifested through a, a man. And I felt that glory, that realm that I knew so well. And in fact, when he's hanging out with Reinhardt and hanging out with others, you know, this kind of mother smoke screen. Don't get me wrong. I love Reinhardt Bonnke. I love all these others. I mean, Reinhardt's one of my favorite pre preachers and ministers. I'm just saying this guy, you know, he's, he's kind of cloaking himself with certain 
distant relationships with these guys, okay? And the, I, I had an encounter recognizing beyond ever before how that Satan can come with every similitude of the anointing. And the only, there's only one way to sort him out. You know how? And the Lord told me, the Lord is Christ. The Lord told me, of course, my, my wife was right involved in it. The Lord told me, uh, he was speaking to me when I was listening to the guy talk. He said his, word, his word's wrong. And because the Lord gave me a gift at a very early age that when someone was speaking, the word was bubble up out of my innermost being. I'd hear the word. I'd hear this scripture, that scripture, the other scripture. You know, and I wasn't antagonistic. I wasn't a troublemaker. Because if you like, if you like, ah, you used making you participate with spirit of strife, so you just bat off as anybody else. But I just, the Lord would keep me. The Lord keeps us through his word. But I, I make that point to say, dear people, you've got to understand. You, you, the, Satan has a craft, has tricks that you know nothing about. Human beings, as much as God loves us here, we are no match for the satanic realm. None. Not in the same league. But if you and I are strong, strength, Lord, power of his might, if we walk in, in the Holy Ghost, if we find our, keep ourselves over here in this love of God, walking in this realm of the word of God, Satan's no match for us. You have to decide. You need to, I want you to get some holy fear tonight. Come on now, man. I want, I want, I want this meeting to say, you're gonna, I want you to get some paper and pen out and start numbering some changes. Because you make some changes, God's going to see it. God will see it. He will honor it. You begin to make adjustments in your life. You say, okay, we're not doing my life. We're not doing our life that way anymore. We're going to allow the floodlight of heaven to shine upon our soul. And we're going to allow God, the Holy Ghost, to examine us. And we're going to look at these places where we've allowed things in our lives to commune with uh, in our spirit that are unholy thoughts, that are wrong attitudes, that are wrong, wrong actions, that are wrong conduct, that are wrong behavior, that are covetous living, that seeking our own life doing our own thing, consumed with the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches and pleasures of this world, but to name them. God wants to have that kind of a meeting with you. And it's not, it's not necessarily going to happen all tonight, but let it be, let, come on, let it be a beginning, because there's some of you, I've talked to you like this and, for a long time, and, and, and you know, you're going to have to deal with really how you've been serious and what kind of changes you've made. How serious have you been with God? Because the Lord's coming. The Lord's coming, and as reward is with him. To give to every man according to the deeds which they've done. That's what he said. Be, be certain it's true. He's coming. Every person will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for the deeds that are done in his body, both good and bad. Kakos. You could actually say kakos. And that's it's a Greek word, and it's bad as it sounds, but it literally means bad or evil. Kakos. Huh? And we made it for something else, right? But it fits. It fits. Are you with me? I'm not saying a bad pastor's not saying a bad word at church. I'm just speaking Greek. But the Lord Jesus is addressing you. He just simply wants you to put on glory. You put on clothing, praise God. Huh? You go after things. You go after things of what you can eat, what you can wear, reputation, fame, purpose. He's asking you to be clothed with his glory. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's asking you to put on joy. He's asking you to put on love. He doesn't want you to bring a vain oblation, a vain sacrifice, an offering. An offering of whatever the leftovers are. Huh? You need to prepare to come to the meeting. You need to get built up in the Holy Ghost. And if you don't know what building, get, you know, come on, dear people. Are we, are we on the same page here? Yes. Are we talking, when we talk about built up in the Holy Ghost, do we all recognize that that's joy unspeakable and full of glory? That's the love of Christ pouring out of you. That's peace passes understanding. <laughs> that's his goodness. Either 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord Jesus, I thank you that your glorious presence is here. And the miracle divine grace is made available to everyone that will impact and affect their face, their countenance. Imagine what people that you work with have to look like, look at, brother. And they know that you are a person who's had to receive the miracle change of the new birth. And that you were a living epistle. Huh? Can we get some Holy Ghost witness? Huh? Can we? Are you, are you doing good tonight in church? Are you listening to your mama? Are you being happy? Are you singing and worshiping and praising the Lord? Or do you go uh, walking and leaping and praising God? Walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Oh, study bitty. What is it that you expect from God? Listen, the Lord's been talking to you. And you've got to listen. You have to listen. The Lord demands change. You have to listen. And it's not change that Father's not asking something hard of you. He's not asking something unreasonable. He just says, present your body to living sacrifice. He simply says, deny yourself. If you hold on to yourself, you're going to be sad and sorrowful and burdened and heavy and upset. And disappointed. But if you just deny yourself and take this wonderful life and enjoy this wonderful gift of God's divine grace and interact with Him, it is, I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care if they're hanging you up by your feet and beating you daily in your shins with bamboo sticks. You're happy. You are happy. I know. Because I have friends who experience that and they tell me they're very happy. The Lord would take all the pain away. Whether they're getting beat, they'd fall asleep. Can you imagine being hung from your feet, being beat in your shins with bamboo sticks, getting splintered? Huh? You know, everybody knows how it is, to, how bad it hurts to get a shin splint, right? And the Holy Ghost just comes on you and just falls asleep. Make the guards so mad any time they've beaten him, just fall asleep. He'll be here next month. No, he's going to be here in April. And so what happens, brother, you and him minister. But as soon as he falls down on his knees and he starts singing the songs, the glory of the miracle, because that's what he did so many years in prison. And then you're getting beat. He starts singing the songs and they beat him and, and you fall asleep. Understand what happened with Stephen when they stoned him with rocks. Scripture says he fell asleep. What serious, de devastating, disastrous situation that you live in that steals your joy? Christ Jesus said, I'll give you peace. And that a peace that the world cannot take from you. You've got to quit giving it to the world, brother. Because the world can't take it, you've got to give it. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, you rise up and you begin to be strong and very courageous concerning this thing. And you, you say, this is the way it's going to be. Big boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to get, up in, get up in whatever opposing situation you're dealing with and say, it's done. You're done. You're finished here. And watch what God will do. The zeal of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, the power of his might will come upon you. 
as soon as Samson began to move in obedience to God, the anointing come upon him. Didn't matter what was going to take the gates of the city to walk away with it. Take a jawbone of a donkey. And the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you and strengthens you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm close with this verse of Scripture. Colossians 1.11. Isn't that a powerful one? It makes you want to just raise your hands right there, doesn't it? To the glory. Father, do you know that the Lord has supernatural experiences for you? It is amazing things happen when you begin to let the Holy Spirit take over your spirit, your soul, and your body. He begins to do His work. You begin to raise your hands under divine inspiration. And you feel the glory. You begin to speak and sing under divine inspiration. And you feel the glory. You begin to pray and move under divine inspiration. And you feel the glory. Hallelujah. The very evidence of God's life. I'm going to command you to do something. Now, I don't know how many of you in here are obedient. How many of you in here you believe you're obedient? Just a couple people raised their hand. And I, I, I didn't believe that. Some of the people raised their hands reluctantly. How many of you in here believe you're obedient? That's better. I believe that too about every one of you. I, you know, I just, I know the enemy of your soul, how adverse, how much of adversity he can create. I know how big of a deceiver he is. I know about his tricks. But look, I'm, look, I'm not blaming anybody. Understand me. I know that without the strength of the Lord and his power of his might, you cannot stand against the wiles of Satan. I know without divine power, you cannot tread upon the works of Satan. They're going to tread on you. They're going to constantly be messing with you, stopping you. Satan will stop the shout. He will stop the praise. He will stop the prayer. Huh? He'll stop the flow through oppressive means that he uses it's just someday you're going to rise up and go mm. yeah. you finished here you ain't doing that to me no more <laughs> i think papa loves me so passionately because i've always been that way i'm not letting any, i'm not letting anything stand between me and him huh come on now oh, i'm just want to provoke you to good works amen Don't ever let anything, don't ever let anything stand between you and Christ Jesus because he's not letting anything stand between himself and you. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. How, how am I going to be strong? I'm going to be strengthened by the Spirit. In me. The Holy Ghost is going to bring me strength. Huh? The joy of the Lord will be my strength. Now, Jesus was in the midst of the garden. The angels came and strengthened him when he's saying, let this cup pass for me. But, huh? You know what I'm saying? What, 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 Luke, what is that? Luke 23, yeah. God, I can humble die. Angels came and strengthened him. Boom, die in a mind. Well, if angels come strengthen Jesus, they'll come strengthen you. You ever been strengthened by an angel of the Lord? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. Amen. Amen. And nothing feels so wonderful and feels so good. It's his presence. And you can stay in his presence all the time. You can stay in fellowship and communion with the Holy Ghost all the time. And at, at the result of that will be a greater revelation the presence of the Lord in your life and through your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You live more in heaven than in earth. I know, I know what King James says, but can I, I'm just going to read it to you here. I quote in King James, but that's because 
That's what I, that's what I read all my life. Some of it I memorized, some of it I didn't have to memorize. But you know, even when a gift of God works in your life to remind you of the verse of Scripture, if you're so hungry for the Word, you just go ahead and memorize whole books of the Bible. Right? I know some of you are not saying right. The majority of you are not saying right, because that's not, that event's not happy. Somebody lied to you and said you couldn't remember. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed what God will do. When you begin to step out and say, I'm hungry for you, Lord. Lord, I want your kingdom manifested in my life more than anything else. I'm going to do what you said, Jesus. You said take no thought for my life. You said take no thought for what I should wear or what I should eat. You know, the Lord's given me I, I, a, a nice house to live in. A nice room to be comfortable in when I go to bed. I sit in there and I go, though I'm comfortable and I enjoy the place, I, I'm, I'm not attached to it. I, I constantly say, Lord, Lord, I don't need any of this. All I want you. It's import, that's important for me to do. The things that the Lord given me. Lord, I don't need any of this. How can I use it for you? Because all I want is you. It's part of the offering as well. Lord, you bless me. Jacob said, Lord, seeing as you're going to go with me and you're going to bless me, seeing as you're going to do these things, I'm going to give you a tenth of all that you give to me. And really, it wasn't so much for the Lord as it was for Jacob that he wouldn't forget who blessed him. It's always the memorial offering. In other words, it's the offering so you don't forget. That's what a memorial offering is. It's the offering so you don't forget. The Lord says, I take that memorial offering. I take that sacrifice of your heart, the offering, so you don't forget. And I'll multiply it. I'll multiply it in your life. <laughs> and people, that's got to be far more than a, a tithe of our finances. That's a life. What he wants to do with us. What he wants to do with us in this church, what he wants to do with us in this building, what he wants to do with us on this property. The Lord asks you, he say, you, some of you don't even believe this. I know you don't. Some of you don't believe this. The Lord asks you, Christ Jesus asks you, this year, give him one tenth of your time. Just this year, give him one tenth of your time. Jesus asks you that. Now, come out of my mouth, but I guarantee you this. When you stand before him, he reminds you of it. He said, give me one-tenth of your time, 2.4 hours every day. He asked you January 1st, December the 31st. But we're busy. We're busy. We're going to go back to our routines. You know, that's right. Everybody makes all these New Year's resolutions. God made a New Year's resolution. <laughs> he asked you. He won't force you to ask you. And unless you're desperate for him, unless you're hungry and thirsty, unless you want the kingdom of God more than anything else, unless you sold out, bought in, lock, stock, and barrel to this, you forget. Most people have already forgot their New Year's resolutions. The people that were going to lose weight, the people that were going to get healthier, the people who were going to, all the adjustments, none. It's over, it's over. Oh, yeah. Well, why? Because I'm back in my routine. So all of this vast blessing and all this vast power and all this vast and abundance life and all these wonderful things that every one of us want are there available for us, but we're too busy to get them. We're doing our own thing, but we never say we're doing our own thing because we write God in it. Oh God, Not here, written here, but we get it all mixed up here. Mm-hmm. Father loves you, but you have to stop living like you've been living. You'll notice, if, you, if you'll let God examine you, you'll notice routines in your life have nothing to do with God. And can I make it real simple? Here's what the, can I make it real simple for you? It's not all the activities and the deeds and the things that you're doing. It has nothing really to do with that. It's your unwillingness to be full of the Holy Ghost. 
Because when you're full of the Holy Ghost and the presence of God's flowing out of you, I don't care what you're doing. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be God. It's going to be God at work. It's going to be God at play. It's going to be God in the morning and God in the evening. It's going to be <laughs> God at, 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 in the noontime and God at midnight too. Are you with me? He's asking you to be full of the Spirit. He's asking you to abound in glory. He's asking you to give yourself over to a realm that He's there and available to fill you up with. It's not some, it's not some kind of you know, esoteric, some kind of fantastical uh, concept. It's a living, re real, living relationship that we're not uh, participating in. We're not desperate for it. We're not hungry for it enough. Well, somehow, the value of though every, probably just about everybody in here has been some to some dimension touched with the power and the manifest glory of God. It's just a, a shout and a hallelujah time, then you go back to your routine. No, you never, you can never move forward there. It's a ditch. It becomes a ditch. What God meant to be a blessing and advancement becomes a ditch. Because now it's relegated to a meeting room. You listen to me. Just listen to me. God's got one thing He requires of you. To be filled with spirit. It's only one day, way you're going to redeem the time for the day is evil. There's only one way you're going to be an overcomer. There's only one way you're going to be able to stand against the wiles of Satan. There's only one way that you can serve God, know God, praise God, be those the people that God have established foundational principle. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by my Holy Spirit, says the living God. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. Spirit of the Lord that he's given to us. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Do what I do. I guarantee you something's going to happen to you. Change. Obey me, says the Lord, if you love me. And he has promised to come manifest himself to you. You just lift out your hand. You say, oh, God, I thank you for your spirit, Father. For the spirit of wisdom and understanding. For the spirit of counsel and strength. The valor, might of the mighty. Something that belongs to the almighty. El Shaddai, the almighty. Hallelujah. God of mighty. <laughs> the mighty men of valor. We shall do valiantly. Valiant. For it is God who treads down all our enemies. Hallelujah. James said, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, yeah. huh? keeping yourself in the love of God. Very few people do it. Very few people will be, are willing to be continually filled with the Spirit. Very few people are willing to keep themselves over to that place beginning in the morning, all the way through the day where the power and the glory of his love, where you're saying, Lord, I, all I want is your manifest love through my life to everybody I'm meeting, your joy manifested through my life, your peace, your divine grace, your authority everywhere I go, to where no powers of darkness are able to hold men in strongholds. All you got to do is say, Lord, this is the life I want to live, and he's going to make sure that it happens. For you to change. Hear my voice. Huh? Says the Lord to me, calling to you. He stretches forth his hand. Look at Nine and day, petitioning and come. It's different than the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they had the law for righteousness. Now, God commands us to be filled with the Spirit. Hmm? There's a different expectation. It's not less of responsibility. It's greater responsibility. To whom more is given, more is required. And I'm going to tell you right now, more is given of the New Testament believer. Quantitatively and qualitatively. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Don't miss the day of your visitation. Don't stay in the place where you're at. Depression is a manifestation of a demon spirit. Sorrow and sadness are a manifestation of a demon spirit. It will be broken the moment you yield to the Holy Ghost. It's because you clutch yourself. You hold on to your own life. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Give it all to the Lord. Whatever is messing with you, give it to the Lord right now. I break the power of it. I break the power of it now. Every demonic assignment, I break the power of the stronghold of it off of you now. Every sickness, every disease, 
every lie. The redeemed of the Lord have an evidence and a proof that God has given. You cannot tell God he's a liar. You cannot tell God, oh, it isn't that way. He said, the redeemed of the Lord return and come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting joy, a joy that does not fade away is on their head. That's the new covenant saint. These are the fruits of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit, the witness of the Spirit, the testimony of those that are born of God. This love, this joy, this peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To demand it of your soul, to be valiant, to be strong and very courageous so that you can go and do the things that God has anointed you to do, even as Joshua went and did the things that God anointed him to do. And in the face of his enemy, he said to the moon, stand still. And the sun, don't you move. <laughs> and they had to listen. Wow. you got to believe something different about yourself. All God's asking you to do is point at your face and say, get filled with the Spirit. Shine with the brightness of God. Look happy and look joyful. Let praise come out of your mouth. Let the joy of the Lord, let thanksgiving, let that, let that right attitude, let that divine presence of God's Holy Ghost who's talking to the Father like the Spirit, like the Son talks to the Father because you've got the Spirit of the Son on the inside of you, gushing out of you. More than a wellspring springing up. That's what Jesus said about the life he has. I will have that which he described. And I will demand it of God's people. If they are indeed God's people. The one who serve God's people. He said you drink of this gift. It will be a well springing up on the inside of you. And you will never thirst for the world again. It will be a well spring of life. The very life of God. The very living presence of the living God. His kind of life. His kind of mercy. His kind of joy. His kind of goodness. His kind of truth. You're going to have to be strong and very courageous to walk out the assignment that God has given you. Hallelujah. To go everywhere and cast out devils. To go everywhere lay hands on the sick. To go everywhere shining with the brightness of this wonderful light of life that lights up the world with the very presence of Jesus Christ, His life manifested in you and me. Paul said, God chose to reveal His Son, Christ Jesus, in Him. He said Jesus, he went on to say Jesus manifested in His mortal flesh. Amen. He's a model believer. I'm follow Him. And the scripture says, obey them that have the rule over you, and that's me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So obey. Amen. And I'm not going to ask you to do anything that God hadn't asked you to do. Oh, I don't care what people say. It doesn't matter how people cry out, foul. Oh, he's controlling. Satan was the first person to call his pastor controlling. Satan was the first person to blame his pastor for his problems and his issues. Satan was the first one to lead his church split. All those who hear his voice and walk after his fashion and manner do the same thing today. Huh? I tell you right now, you are controlled by something. And I say you should come under the rulership and governorship of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I say you should let the rule of God rule over you. Amen. The word of God. Voluntarily, though, obviously, the Lord's going to come with a rod of iron. Scripture says he's going to smite with a rod of iron. And shatter the vessels. That's what he's going to do. He says today is a refiner's fire and a fuller soul. And I say, I say, refiner's fire burn. <laughs> I say, fuller soap. Cleanse me now. Amen. Wash me and I shall be clean. Let me not suck out Al montanis. Stand over in the light. You can see the word real well. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you walk in the light, of course, John said it. Jesus said it by John. He said, if you walk in the light as I'm in the light. John said, if you walk in the light as he's in the light. Whew, that's the life of God. Hallelujah. That's a revelation of God. Hallelujah. 
by definition from John all the way through, by definition from Genesis 1 all the way through. From in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, <clears throat> 1. Revelation 22, 21. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's all about the light of life. If you walk in the light, there's keys in the light. Then you have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. People want to go ahead and walk in darkness and say the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses them from all sin. People want to walk out of fellowship with those who know Christ Jesus and say that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses them from all sin. That's not what the Bible says. Papa's not cleansing nobody who's not of the truth. People who walk in a lie and walk in falsehood and there's no true repentance in their life and all they're doing is, is, is using the word of God and, and these various different things as incantations, as it were, magical formulas and then work them to reproach. Are you listening to me? Because no, I'm telling you the truth. Here's what, here's what Paul says. It says, be empowered. Huh? I know King James said, be strengthened. Huh? Be empowered. Look at this. With all power. Hallelujah. Be empowered. This is what you get to be. It's not what you have to be. It's what you get to be if you're willing to be filled with the Spirit. How many of you are willing to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Continually. Well, the Lord Jesus, he's all, he said, what's he's, that's his idea. So you got your hand lifted up. So then that what you're telling me is you're saying, Pastor, you know what you're doing? You're saying, Pastor, I need to make changes in my life. Pastor, I need to make changes in my life. That's what you're telling me. And Father's going to help you make those changes. Be empowered with the power according to the might of His glory. Be empowered. Power. The might of His glory. So as Paul said to the Philippians, you can do all things through Christ that empowers you with this strength. The bind working of your faith. Be convinced of this one thing tonight. Every person in this place, the Lord loves you. Nothing can ever change you. He'll always love you. God so loves every human being that has ever come into this world with a desperate love that goes beyond what people can understand. But it seems He only has fellowship with a few. There's a different kind of love in a fellowship. There's a different kind of love in a relationship. You want him more than anything else. And that's the kind of love that was poured into your heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I would like to stay at this and wrestle with some of you. You need to start wrestling with me. That's what the Lord says. I, not me, me, him. You need to start wrestling with him. I'm here on his behalf. He's, are you with me? You need to lay hold on me, says the Lord. The Lord just, you need, he, he still says the same thing. Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Don't be double-minded anymore. Be determined. There's nothing. No sin, no failure, no circumstance, no problem that can in any way separate you from the love of God. No power of darkness, nothing. But you certainly can let it because you are deprived of the knowledge of the Lord. You deprived of an understanding of how much he loves you and the grace that has been poured out for you and 
and the provision supplied by the blood of Jesus. All takes a sincere and honest heart. Amen. Everybody stand with me.